Okay, today we are going to talk about energy and friction. This is in relation to one of the questions on midterm two, and today we're going to explain a similar problem, not the exact one, but basically the same concepts. So today we're going to start out with um, a five kilogram block is set into motion up an inclined plane on a of an initial speed of eight meters per second, the block comes to rest after traveling three meters along the plane. Um, it's an inclined plane of 30 degrees to the horizontal. So first, let's start with our force diagram and our knowns. So we have our known mass of five kilograms. We have a velocity of eight meters per second, a distance of three meters, and an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. Now, we have to do a force diagram to get all of our thoughts put together. So our force diagram is over here. We have a normal force. We have a friction against the block, and it opposes its motion, so it's going in the opposite direction. And we have our gravitational force. Now, None of these are ideal, so you have to do a vector diagram. So going back to our usual SOHCAHTOA, we have mg cosine theta, mg sine theta. Now let's start into our first question. And our first question asks us the change in the block's kinetic energy. But let's first ask a clicker question. Which equation would you use to find kinetic energy? The answer to this question is A. Kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. So let's delve into our problem. So we know delta Ke equals kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. And we know our initial kinetic energy of our block is Kei initial equals one half mv squared. Plugging in all of our knowns, we get one half five times eight meters per second squared is approximately 160 joules. We know our kinetic energy final equals zero because in our problem it states that the block comes to rest. So we do zero minus 160 equals approximately negative 160 joules. So that is our kinetic energy. Our next question asks the change in potential energy. Now this is a very similar way to approach it. We have our delta change in potential energy equals potential energy final minus potential energy initial. Now we plug in our potential energy formula, which is uh, potential energy equals mgh, mass times gravity times height. Our mass is five kilograms. We're approximating gravity to be 10. And our height of our force diagram is three meters sine 30. Because if we're looking at this side, this would be sine of our force diagram and that equals approximately 75 joules. We know our initial potential energy was zero, so using the same formula here, 75 joules minus zero joules equals 75 joules. Moving into part C, which asks us the friction force exerted on the block. We have another clicker question which asks, when the block is sliding down the plane, which of the following are conserved? The answer here is B. But we know momentum is not conserved because we have an external force, which in this case is friction. So now to solve part C, we know that since en energy is conserved, we can have Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final plus the work due to friction. When we plug in our equations that we know, we have one half mv squared equals mgh 
plus fk d cosine theta. We plug in all our known variables, and we have this following equation, and now we can solve for friction, the force due to friction, which is approximately negative 28 newtons. Then we can solve part D. What is the coefficient of friction? We know that Fk equals the coefficient of friction times the normal force. In this case, our normal force equals mg cosine theta. We plug in our answer from part C, and we can solve for mu k. And we find that mu k is approximately negative 0.65. We have solved all parts to this problem. We hope that this was helpful. Thank you. Goodbye.